Have you heard of Libsodium? In this video I want to show you how you can use the gold standard cryptography library in PHP to encrypt and decrypt data. Hi, my name is Bernard, I'm a software engineer working in Vienna, Austria, and I will share with you my experiences with using the Libsodium PHP cryptography library. When we are finished with this video, you will have a good understanding on what the library can do for you and especially how you can use it for a symmetric encryption scenario. There are three parts in this video. First, I will give you a quick understanding on what Libsodium can do for you. In the second part, I will give you a short demonstration with a real code example. And in the third part, I will give you some further pointers if you want to read more. So why do you need a cryptography library? Well, conventional wisdom already says you should not try to reinvent cryptography by yourself, but you should rather use existing libraries that do that for you. And with Libsodium, uh, this is especially true. The developers of Libsodium tried very hard to make it very difficult for you to make uh, cryptography decisions uh, in the wrong way. So most functions that are there are already battle tested and you can use them as they are in the documentation without having to do any further configuration steps or anything like that. Libsodium is integrated into PHP since version 7.2. So if you're using PHP 7.2 or uh, above, you don't even need to install any packages. For versions below, you can use the polyfill versions. Just one comment on the OpenSSL library, which could theoretically also be used to encrypt data. While it's true that this library is also included in PHP, it's more like a set of building blocks that still need to be assembled in the right way. So you still need some kind of expert level in cryptography to make everything right. Uh, with Libsodium, the, the situation is quite different. As a developer, you don't need to know very much about cryptography to not make any mistakes with Libsodium. Furthermore, Libsodium provides authenticated encryption. That means attackers cannot read your messages, but they also cannot change your messages. Now, with all those reasons speaking for Libsodium, let me now give you a quick overview over the library and the functions we are going to use in this tutorial. There are several use cases Libsodium is built for. At first, let's look at symmetric encryption. With symmetric encryption, you have a plain text that is turned into a ciphertext by using a shared key. This key is called shared because the sender and the receiver of the message need to use the same key to encrypt and to decrypt the message. So after the sender has encrypted the message and the ciphertext is sent to the receiver, the receiver can now use the same shared key to decrypt the message implement symmetric key encryption by using the secret box API. The function takes three input parameters, the message you want to encrypt, a nonce and the key and it returns the ciphertext. Now what is a nonce? A nonce or number used only once is a generated number that you send along with your encrypted message. It is used to enhance the cryptographic properties of the encryption and makes the whole process more secure. Now let's get started using symmetric key encryption with a real code demo. I'm using PHP version 7.4.9 and as this is higher than 7.2, the Libsodium library is already included and we don't need any packages to work. So let's start with defining a message. Now we need to create two variables called key and nonce. The key will be, for the first step, be created randomly. So we will use the random bytes function of PHP and have a length of the key of sodium crypto secret box key bytes. The second thing we need is a nonce, a number used only once. And I will go into why we need that in a second. But let's also create that with a different length sodium crypto secret box non-spots. So uh, there are two different constants. This one is equal to 32. This one is equal to uh, 24. And you can already guess that the length of the two variables should be different. So um, let's start by creating a ciphertext from these three variables. So we want to encrypt the message using a key and a nonce that are randomly generated and we want to get a ciphertext from that. So let's create a ciphertext variable and call the sodium uh, 
crypto secret box method. And you can see there are three parameters we need to supply, which are the message, plain text, the nonce, and finally the key. So let's see what PHP does with this very simple script. I'm starting the debugger and we can now jump through the lines and see what the variables are initialized to. So as you can see, the message variable is actually readable. However, the key is just a gibberish of non-printable characters. Same is true for the nonce. And the same is also uh, going to be true for the ciphertext because it's also a uh, yeah, non-printable format. So if you want a printable format, we could say echo base 64 encode, and this function will just map all the uh, bits in the ciphertext to printable characters. Let's provide the ciphertext. And now if we just run everything, we will get the output, which is the ciphertext. So, this is actually everything you need, but of course, creating the key and the nonce randomly is maybe not what you would expect. So at least the key is probably, or very probably not randomly generated, but you will uh, generate it once and then read it from a database or a file system, for example. So instead of echoing the ciphertext, let us now echo the key. And since this is generated in a secure way, we can just say, okay, this is our key now. And instead of generating it, we're using the base64 decode function and provide this uh, base64 encoded string. So now the key is, so if we run it again, uh, we will see it. The key is now static and it's not uh, randomly generated anymore. And now you will, uh, understand why we need a nonce. So let us echo again the, the ciphertext. Okay. You can see the key is static, but the nonce is still randomly generated. And both the key and the nonce are used to generate the ciphertext. So although we have a static key and a static message, the created ciphertext will be different every time. So let's run it a few times. You can see it start, starts with GNO. Next time it starts with NDG. So it's different every time, although it's the same message. Now, this is the important part because if we didn't have the nonce, an attacker would only uh, see the ciphertext, of course, but uh, he would be able to notice if I sent the same message two times. Now, this might not sound very problematic, but imagine you have a communication system and all I'm answering is yes or no to certain requests. Now, if you can uh, see the encrypted messages and you know what uh, messages are generated by yes and no, for example, because you can uh, manipulate the, the request, you suddenly can uh, read all the communication, although we are using secure encryption, right? So sending the nonce with the ciphertext guarantees that the ciphertext is different every time and an attacker cannot gain any additional information. Now, the next thing you're going to want is to decrypt the generated ciphertext, right? So let's say we create this variable ciphertext base 64. And we would now give this uh, ciphertext to a trusted colleague or a trusted party. And now they need to decrypt it, right? So now we're going to use the sodium crypto secret box open function. And as you can guess, it also takes the, the ciphertext. The nonce and now we we actually need to send the nonce with the uh, ciphertext, as I mentioned before. So let's assume this comes also as a base64 encoded string. Nonce base64, we are going to define that in a second. 
and of course the key. All right, I'm just reformatting that. So we still need to define this non space 64. And again, I'm only doing this space 64 encoding so that we can uh, transmit the data easier because most of the time databases and file systems and HTTP uh, transfers also have problem with non-printable characters. So I will also apply the base64 encode method with the nodes. All right, so if everything worked out, we can now echo plain text two, and it should again be the message we encrypted in the very beginning. So let's start. And yes, it worked. So just a small demonstration of what this looks like internally. Uh, the ciphertext base 64, for example, is this printable string of the ciphertext. The nonce base 64 is the printable string of the nonce, and we are going to send both those strings to a different party. And they can then, together with the key, which they should already have, we are not going to transmit the key, that would be very insecure. We are just transmitting the ciphertext and the nonce. The nonce can be public, that's fine. Uh, and now the other party will use the ciphertext, the nonce and the key it already has to decrypt the message. And voila, we have uh, successfully demonstrated a symmetric key encryption and decryption with PHP. As I mentioned, there are other use cases Libsodium is built for than symmetric key encryption alone. Two other areas you might want to look at are public key encryption and hashing. With public key encryption, you do not share a single key between the sender and the receiver of the message. Instead, you have a key pair, a public and a private key. Only the public key is shared with the receiver of the message and the public key can then be used to decrypt the message that was encrypted with the private key. You can have a look at the Crypto Box API of Libsodium if you want to implement public key encryption by yourself. The second interesting use case is hashing. With hashing, you are not interested in sharing information, but rather in verifying the integrity of information, for example. Hashes are fingerprints of information and you can use them, for example, for file integrity checking. If you're interested in that, have a look at the crypto generic hash function of Libsodium. There are many more functions of Libsodium I cannot go into right now, but feel free to browse through the documentation if you want to find out if that's interesting for you. In my opinion, using Libsodium is the right choice for you if you're developing in PHP and a very important first step towards a more secure and more productive software development lifecycle. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions regarding the code sample or the library setup and have a great day.